Hello everyone, welcome to my YouTube channel Pathology Learning. I am Dr. Monica. So in today's class, we will be seeing about the second part of intracellular accumulations under the cell injury series. So already we had seen about the pigments in under intracellular accumulations. So in today's class, we will be seeing about lipid, protein and glycogen accumulations. So whenever these substances get accumulated, they will in turn lead to cell injury. So first we will see about lipids. So lipids, it can be either a triglyceride accumulation or cholesterol, cholesterol esters accumulation. So starting with triglycerides. So triglycerides, usually lipid metabolism takes place in the liver. So the major place wherein this lipid uh, accumulation happens is in the liver. So whenever there was this fat metabolism derangement, so this lipids get accumulated in the liver. Not just in the liver, they also get accumulated in the heart. So in the liver, we call it as fatty liver because the deposition of lipid is present in the liver. So its other aim is the steatosis. Okay, steatosis is nothing but fatty liver. There are two types of uh, steatosis, which is microvesicular steatosis. Next is macrovesicular steatosis. Microvesicular is when, when we tell, suppose this was a hepatocyte. So we see multiple small, small vacuoles in inside the cell. So that is what is called as a microvesicular steatosis. So in this image, if you see, this one is microvesicular steatosis. So there are many small, small vesicles. So all these are microvesicular steatosis. However, a macrovesicular steatosis is one which looks like an adipocyte. That is, the entire cell is filled with a single vacuole and nucleus is being pushed to the periphery. So it just looks like an adipocyte, right? So that is what is called as a macrovesicular steatosis. And here in this image, if you see all these bigger ones are macrovesicular steatosis. So we saw about steatosis which is microvesicular or macrovesicular steatosis. So moving on, there is another triglyceride accumulation which is the fatty heart. Like I told, the lipid triglyceride can also be uh, deposited in the heart and this is called as a tabby heart appearance. So tabby heart appearance is nothing but a fatty heart only because why is it given this name? Tabby cat, have you seen a tabby cat appearance? So tabby cat is one which looks like striped, alternate stripes are there, right? So in this heart, if you see, we can see this reddish normal areas alternating with this yellow colored area. So these yellow areas are nothing but the lipid deposited areas. So this alternate red normal area, normal myocardium along with the lipid deposition gives this tabby cat appearance, which is nothing but a fatty heart. So this is the microscopic image of the same. So herein we can see this is the normal cardiac muscle, but in between we, we see this lipid deposition which is looking like an adipocyte, right? So this is the alternating pattern of normalcy and lipid which is called as the tabby heart. So moving on to the next type of lipid deposition which is cholesterol. So cholesterol can be accumulated in various conditions like atherosclerosis, xanthomas, cholesterolosis, Neiman pick disease which is an inherited disorder, basically a lysosomal storage disorder. So we will see one by one what about these. So atherosclerosis, we all know that it is excess of cholesterol. When the patient is obese or because of hyperlipidemia, in hyperlipidemic states, the lipid gets deposited in the vessel wall. So where in the vessel wall? We know the vessel wall is comprised of intimal layer, then the media, which is the muscle layer, then the adventitia. So in the intimal layer, which is the innermost layer, we can see the accumulation of these cholesterols inside the foamy macrophages. So macrophages and smooth muscle will also start to develop inside this intima. Intima is not supposed to have smooth muscle, but in atherosclerosis, smooth muscles and macrophages start uh, infiltrating the intimal layer and these are filled up with the cholesterols. So cholesterol esters fill up and they become foamy in appearance. So in this image, if you see, this is the vessel lumen and this lumen is greatly narrowed by this part. Right, so this is actually the intimal layer only, which is showing the deposition of cholesterol and smooth muscle. So if you see there is something like white, white kind of cleft like spaces, these are nothing but cholesterol crystals. So when once these macrophages take up this cholesterol, the macrophages can also burst open. So when they die, they when they rupture, they release this cholesterol into the surrounding and they tend to look like these clefts. These are cholesterol crystals which appear like cholesterol clefts. Okay. 
So there is also calcification which is also a component we can see in the atherosclerosis. So the, what is this part called as? In the intimate layer we are seeing smooth muscle, cholesterol, foamy macrophages filled with this cholesterol uh, and then this calcification. So this is nothing but an atheroma. Okay, atheroma which is narrowing the lumen of the vessel. So moving on to the next example which is a cholesterolosis. Cholesterolosis is a condition called as a strawberry gallbladder. It is a condition in the gallbladder wherein excess of cholesterol is being taken up by the foamy macrophages and they get deposited in the lamina propria. So lamina propria is just beneath the epithelium. So this is the epithelium of the gallbladder while this is the lamina propria in which we can see these foamy macrophages. Okay. So foamy macrophages which has taken up the cholesterol. Uh, grossly if you see it will uh, just look like a uh, strawberry. Okay, so this is the congested red areas are just the congested mucosa and these yellow yellow dots which are present now. So that looks like a strawberry. So these yellow dots are nothing but cholesterol. Okay, so this is the characteristic appearance of a cholesterol losses. So the next example will be a xanthoma. We all would have seen elderly people who have these yellow colored uh, masses uh, underneath their eyebrows, especially around the eyes, right? So that the, those are nothing but xanthomas. Xanthomas are just collection of foamy macrophages in the subepithelial tissue which are being laden with the cholesterol. Okay, so in this image, if you see, this is the epithelium, this is stratified squamous epithelium. Underneath this, in the subepithelium, we can see the dermal foamy mass, uh, macrophages which are filled up with the cholesterol. So, fat, fat is basic, uh, lipids are nothing but fat, right? So, fat they get removed during processing, tissue processing. So, in HND, whenever we see the uh, process slides, which is formal and fixed, we can, uh, the fat appears white. They are just removed. So, they just appear white in color. So, how to stain a fat? So, only when you take a frozen section, that is a fresh tissue section, fresh uh, section. So, in that, if you put osmium tetroxide, oil red o, or sudan black B, these are all fat stains. So, lipid is stained. So, let us see in what color these stains. So, oil red o is the stain in which lipid is stained red in color as the name suggests. Then, Sudan black B again as the name suggests lipid is stained black in color. But, Sudan 4 is again will stain lipid red in color. Okay. So, osmium tetroxide is also a stain for uh, fat. Another thing about osmium tetroxide I will just tell here. It is also used for uh, DNA fingerprinting. Okay. So, it is another MCQ, potential MCQ which can be asked. So, we had seen about lipid accumulations. Moving on to the next type of accumulation which is protein accumulation. So, uh, when does this, uh, what kind of proteins do accumulate? So, when, when does this happen? Either when a normal protein is produced in excess. Okay. So, that will be in a condition called as multiple myeloma. So, multiple myeloma is a condition wherein plasma cells produce abnormal increased uh, um, immunoglobulins. So, these increased immunoglobulins get deposited. So, that is one condition wherein you see increased protein accumulation. Other than that, we can see abnormal proteins also which are getting accumulated like amyloidosis. So, amyloidosis is, amyloid is nothing but a fibrillary protein only. We will be reading about uh, uh, amyloidosis in detail in the immuno, uh, immunology chapter. Okay. So, amyloid is nothing but a fibrillary protein which is getting uh, misfolded or ab which is abnormal and that causes dysfunctioning of the organ in which it is getting deposited. So, that is again a protein uh, accumulation example. Other than that, we can have misfolded proteins. So, we have read about the normal uh, folding of the protein which is helped by the chaperons. So, when this uh, folding does not happen properly, the, it will result in misfolded proteins. That will result in endoplasmic reticulum stress. Right. So, whenever these misfolding proteins accumulate, that can cause cell injury because of endoplasmic reticulum stress. So, some of the examples of misfolded proteins will be alpha-1 antitrypsin deficiency. Okay. We will be seeing it in a while. Next, another than, other than that, we can also have cytoskeletal proteins accumulation. Cytoskeletal proteins, there are many types of it like actin, myosin, then other than that, we also have intermediate filaments. Okay. Intermediate filament is also a cytoskeletal protein. So, there are various types of intermediate filaments which are vimentin, cytokeratin, desmin, GFAP and neurofilament. Okay. Cytoskeletal proteins are nothing but they support the cell. So, they maintain the shape of the cell. They uh, give the scaffolding to the cell. Okay. So, vimentin is the cytoskeletal protein which is seen in connective tissue. In connective tissue, we see vimentin. While in epithelial tissue, we see cytokeratin. 
while desmen is specific for muscle tissue and gfab is specific for astrocytes basically glial tissue then neurofilament it is for neurons okay so all of these are cytoskeletal uh, proteins which are intermediate filaments they are also seen accumulated in certain conditions that we'll see so starting with the accumulation of cytoskeletal proteins we'll we'll see about two examples here so the first one is the picture of a mallory denk body so it is also called as a mallory hyaline body or alcoholic hyaline so alcoholic hyaline because it is seen mainly in alcoholic liver disease it is not specific for alcoholic liver disease because it is seen in other liver conditions as well including hepatocellular carcinoma but it is mostly seen in alcoholic liver disease that is why it's given the other name as alcoholic hyaline or mallory hyaline so it is compo this is nothing but these pinkish material can you appreciate these darker pink ones so these are composed of intermediate filament cytokeratin only especially cytokeratin 8 and 18 it is a very very important mcq cytokeratin 8 and 18 is the composition of mallory denk bodies which are seen in alcoholic liver disease but these are not specific for alcoholic liver disease so coming to the next example which is a neurofibrillary tangle have you heard of this term i hope so So neurofibrillary tangles are a classical feature which we see in Alzheimer's disease. So it is one of the features of Alzheimer's disease. In Alzheimer's disease we see neuritic plaques and this neurofibrillary tangles. So in this neurofibrillary tangles these are nothing but these flame shaped kind of cell, okay? So this is the accumulation of neurofilament plus a tau protein. Okay, so neurofilament we saw it was an intermediate filament again, right? So Alzheimer's disease, which contains this neurofibrillary tangle, is also an example of accumulation of cytoskeletal proteins. So moving to the other examples of misfolded proteins. So misfolded proteins I told about alpha one antitrypsin deficiency. So alpha one antitrypsin deficiency results in uh, two conditions. One will be an emphysema in the lung. Okay, in lung. it will result in emphysema and in liver it produces alpha 1 antitrypsin deficiency produces a characteristic appearance which is uh, showing the eosinophilic globules in the cytoplasm so in this picture if you appreciate this is all the misfolded alpha 1 ant antitrypsin only which appears as eosinophilic globules inside the cytoplasm of hepatocytes okay uh, alpha 1 antitrypsin is actually a serine protease inhibitor which is needed for controlling the inflammation so whenever this enzyme is deficient what happens the inflammation continues to progress so proteases continue to act upon because their inhibitor is not there so that will actually result in damage and that is a condition called as emphysema so especially a pan asinar kind of an emphysema uh, will result because of this condition so this was an example of a misfolded protein then another example of a misfolded protein is a prions disease so prions disease we have prion proteins so normal prion proteins they don't accumulate but when they are misfolded so they tend to accumulate and they damage the neurons so the neurons they up tend to uh, uh, show this accumulation of this prion protein which appears on histopathology as vacuoles so they are called as vacuolated neurons or spongiform neurons so this is the characteristic image that this again has been asked in many times as an image based question so this spongiform neurons which appear like these grape like vesicles it appears like this tiny tiny white white spaces no these are grape like vesicles or vacuoles present inside the cytoplasm of the neurons so this is called as spongiform neurons which is characteristic of a prions disease this again we'll be reading in detail in cns chapter so moving on to the next type of example which was protein which is produced in excess so we saw multiple myeloma multiple myeloma is a disease of the plasma protein dyskinesia in which there is increased amount of immunoglobulin production these immunoglobulins are uh, actually not functional but still it is increased immunoglobulin production so these increased immunoglobulin tend to deposit in the cytoplasm or the nucleus of plasma cells okay when they accumulate in the cytoplasm of the plasma cells these are called as russell bodies these ones no so these are the russell bodies which are present in the cytoplasm when they accumulate so much in the cytoplasm that they appear like a grape okay so this cell itself is appearing like a grape Con uh, back to back arrangement of these uh, russell's bodies are present no so this cell is called as a mott cell okay same uh, immunoglobulin if it is seen inside the nucleus can you see this so inside the nucleus if these are present then these inclusions are called as dutcher bodies so these again are very important mcqs moving on 
now we had seen about lipid and protein accumulation. So, now we will move on to glycogen accumulation. So, glycogen uh, whenever there is glucose metabolism or glycogen metabolism which is being deranged, then again it will result in the deposition or accumulation of this glycogen or glucose. So, first example will be a glycogen storage disease. So, any of the glycogen uh, storage diseases like von Giox disease, so whatever it is. So, they all in which in, in these diseases, these are storage disorders. So, this excess glycogen which has been, you know, these get uh, accumulated inside the macrophages and the macrophages tend to become foamy. So, in this image if you appreciate, this is a cluster of foamy macrophages which are laden with glycogen. Here again there is a cluster, here again there is a cluster. So, these cluster of foamy macrophages which in, uh, actually contain the uh, material that is the glycogen here is the characteristic image of a glycogen storage disorder. Okay. Other than that, we have Armani Epstein lesion. It is one of the classical lesions which we see in a diabetes, diabetic kidney. Okay. In a diabetic kidney, the pro proximal convoluted tubules, so they will show subnuclear vacuolations. So, subnuclear vacuolation is present in the uh, proximal convoluted tubule of the kidney. So, these vacuoles are nothing but they are composed of this glycogen only. So, this is one of the lesions which we see in a diabetic kidney. How do we stain glycogen? So, glycogen we use the most common stain we use is a periodic acid shift stain which is pass stain. Okay. So, pass stain will be positive for many other things as well like nuisance, basement membrane. So, pass stain is not specific for glycogen. Pass stain is not specific. So, what is specific for glycogen? We can have best carmine stain that is more specific for glycogen. Okay. So, along with that, uh, since this pass is staining other things as well, how do you confirm it is glycogen which is stained by the pass? So, for that we use a technique called as diastase, pass along with diastase. So, diastase is an enzyme which can actually degrade glycogen. So, whenever you are staining glycogen and it is appearing magenta pink in color, that is positive. But when you put diastase on it and the pink color is removed, then it means that it is glycogen. But if the pink color does not go away with diastase, then it means it is not glycogen. It could be some other positivity of uh, pass which could be either mucin, base membrane material, etc. Okay. So, glycogen is pass positive and diastase sensitive. Diastase sensitive means glycogen is being removed on application of diastase. Okay. So, glycogen we told there are two main uh, stains which we use. One is periodic acid shift and then best carmine out of which the best carmine stain was specific and pass positive will appear magenta pink in color. Okay. So, now we had seen about all the intracellular accumulations. So, either there was a defect in the transport or excess production of something or prop, uh, in a, in inappropriate removal of some substance that will actually result in the accumulation of a substance which can in turn cause cell injury, right. So, we saw about various intracellular accumulations starting from pigments, then lipids, proteins and glycogen. So, in pigments we saw about exogenous pigment carbon, then endogenous pigment we saw about various yellow brown pigments and then various black pigments. And then coming to lipids, we saw about triglycerides and cholesterol. The special stain for a lipid will be Sudan black B or a uh, Sudan uh, 4 or osmium tetroxide or oil redo. So, all of these are special stains for fat. So, next we saw about protein accumulation, either a excess accumulation of cytoskeletal proteins or a misfolded proteins or an abnormal protein like amyloid or at least a increased amount of a normal protein as in multiple myeloma. So, coming on to the next deposition which was glycogen, here we saw main thing was Armani Epstein lesion and special stain used for is pass and best carmine. Okay. So, the special stains and the picture image based questions are very important intracellular accumulations. So, do read about it at the last minute. Okay. So, thank you for listening. I hope you like my content. If you like my content, consider subscribing and sharing with your friends who might also benefit from my video. Thank you. Thank you.